Peter Hewitt, La Artistino. Today we're going to look at a new book. This is Painterly Days, the Woodland Watercolouring Book for Adults, and it's one of three books in the Painterly Days series, the other two being Painterly Days Flowers and Painterly Days Patterns. These books have been produced by Christy Rice, a watercolourist who wanted to produce a book where people who like to colour can move on from pencils and markers and try out watercolours instead. And she's done a brilliant job of it. If you look at this book, the production values are very, very high. You open it up and you've got here, I'll just pop things to one side. She's got a lot of explanation here, a foreword, a letter from herself. And then in the in front cover, she has a tutorial and a water wheel. This is brilliant for people who are new to watercolouring. She gives a simple explanation of some of the easy techniques that watercolourists use. And plus you've got this, this wonderful colour wheel right here that uh, will show you just how the colours are placed out and how one colour can merge and mix into another colour, which is great. Over on this side, you have a flap which very conveniently will be, can be placed in between the pages that you're working on and this flap also has a list of suggested materials for the newcomer so the more inexpensive materials to try out and some of the more expensive materials if you want to move on if you feel that you like it or you just want to dive in head first with with good materials because you really want to learn how to watercolor the book itself has 25 pages of watercolour pictures. They're all printed in a light grey ink so that you can colour over the top of it and you've got that nice soft painterly effect without the, the black ink marks but it's still well and truly dark enough for you to pick up everything. Each page is printed on both sides with the same design. So you've got this design here and if you turn over it's exactly the same right on the back so you don't have to sacrifice one side of your page the other benefit is if you do one page and you don't like it or you want to try something different then you turn it over and you've got the same design to play with on the back now this one is a mixture of designs with small animals and um, different floral and leaf effects and berries and such as I said there's 25 pages it's printed on this lovely watercolor paper I think it's about Feels like about 150, 160 GSM if you're familiar with um, paper, the uh, terms regarding um, grading of paper. It's quite nice, it's got a little bit of a texture on it and it feels like it's going to take the watercolour very well. The first couple of pages though in the book itself is very clever I think. Each page has its own little piece where she gives a little explanation about what is actually on the piece, some painting tips for doing that particular page and a couple of uh, beginner artist tips as well. I think this is just wonderful, it's a great idea. So before you start any of the pages you can look up the relevant piece of material in the front here and it'll give you a few tips and things to go on when you start your page. Christy has very very generously sent me out some paints to try out in this book. This is the Artist Loft watercolour paints and she's also sent me this wonderful little dagger paintbrush. It's a bit hard to see there but it's got a, a little point and it's sort of like the the ends of the bristles kind of grayed down here as well so it's not so much in a point as a bit of a uh, a bit of a slant there. It's called I believe it's called a blade so I'm going to try that. I'll also be using a couple of my own Talcon watercolour brushes as well. This set of paints is an inexpensive set of paints so certainly if you're wanting to try this book out you can grab a set just like this and I'll have a go and we'll see how that this set of paints is going to work in this book. And after I've done that I might grab one of my own sets of watercolour paints and we'll have a go with that with something a little bit more professional to see how they react as well. But by the looks of these paints and I've always already had a little play with them I think they're going to do just fine. Let's have a look at the pictures inside. You can see the pictures are printed with this warm grey colour so that when you paint over the top the line art won't be particularly visible which is what the sort of thing you would like with a watercolour. 
each page is printed the same on the front and the back so that if you don't like what you're doing on the front or you just want to have a practice on the front you've still got the other side with exactly the same print that you can use. You've got a mixture of different berries and such there. Roses. Most of these are assortment of flowers and you have these little sayings in there as well. They look very nice all framed up. Some of the work is quite fine and you've got some bigger pieces that you can play with as well. We have here a hummingbird and a heron so there are some animals in here as well. Lots of strawberries, bright reds and pinks to play with. Some butterflies and lettuce. Okay, and here you've got little bunnies as well. So this is a cute little wallpaper sort of. More flowers and berries. This is a great book for practicing and getting a hang of watercolouring, I think. You've got a whole mess of, uh, I think they're damselflies there. And ferns, something different for you to try. Try some different techniques. More little sayings on some of them. There's a, a nice variety. Oh, look, mushrooms. Yeah, who can resist colouring mushrooms? And you've got owls. Okay, more hummingbirds. And lots of butterflies. Ah, oh, this is a nice one. It's a tree. Acorns. And frogs and ladybirds. You've got deer here. Okay, and all sorts of little little berries and buds and things. And uh, scotch the soils by the looks of it. Now, colouring with these, Christy does recommend several different um, paints in her book, but I can show you the sort of things I've used. Things you're going to see me use demonstrated are these very cheap Artist Loft paints. Uh, they're quite good for starters, and you'll see how I go with those. Next level up, if you want something a bit more intense and a bit less chalky, I recommend these. Uh, Koinois, Koinois, sorry, I can't pronounce it. They're from the, I think they're from the Czech Republic, I think. If you open them up, it's a really cute little set. And I'm looking in the future to do a review on these. But this lid screws off and you've got lots and lots of colours to play with. These are quite budget priced and they don't have the chalkiness of the Artist Loft variety and you still get lots and lots of very brilliant colours to play with so that's another one I recommend if you want to go a little bit more expensive but not not overpriced, not really expensive. If you want to go start getting a little bit more professional I've got the Winsor & Newton Cotman's here. I'll pull that open. Comes in a, This one's a little travel kit which is a nice one for starters comes with its own brush. These are their student variety are from Windsor & Newton. They do have professional ones as well. Uh, these are quite nicely priced for the um, types of paints they are and they're great to learn with if you want to go a little bit further. And then of course I've got the other ones which are my personal favourites and I'll also be demonstrating this in this book. And these are my Horror Dam Schminkies. These are quite expensive, but they're for the very serious watercolourists or people who are determined to learn how to watercolour and want to start with a really good product. That's a good one if you're looking for a really good watercolour set, but it does have a bit of a price to it. Let's start painting. First off, I'm going to have a little play with these and see just exactly what they can do. Watercolour paper, this is just a little piece from a, a cheap watercolour pad that I've bought that I use for testing things on. Now I always with watercolours have two pots of water. One pot of water is for cleaning your brush and one pot of water is so you've got fresh clean water to play around with the paints on the paper with without getting them muddy from your water cleaning brush. So pop them up there out the way. 
pops open. Now this one has a removable lid which is really handy. It won't come off when it's closed but when it's open it easily slips out and you can use it as a palette. I've actually got my own little palette here so I'll use that instead. And the other thing that I recommend with watercolours is before you start you get yourself a little mister and this is a Derwent mister but you can just use any little bottle that will spray a fine mist of water fill it with clean water and just start off by misting your paints and the reason I do that is because they're nice and wet to start off with and it just makes it a little less um, bothersome to try and wet them down every time you want to, to grab some fresh paint out there we go. This little mister is also very handy for watercolour effects if you want to wet the paper down. You can spray it beforehand. I use this a lot with watercolouring. And I'll grab my little, oh dear, I think it's a size 6 talcum brush. It's the round end. Let's see now. I'll try this light blue for starters. That dissolves fairly quickly actually. Oh yeah, look at that. That's quite nice. Let's pop a little bit of water on it. It moves about a bit. As I said, these are not artist quality paints, but I reckon they're going to do the job for uh, playing around with and just getting a feel of the watercolours. The other thing I've got here is a piece of um, uh, kitchen paper just to dampen, just to get the excess water off my brush or if I need it for anything that I want to remove water from. I've just got that there handy so I can grab hold of it. So let's apply a little bit more water onto this. And try mixing a bit of one of the other blues, hey? How about that darker one? See what happens. Oh, well, that's nice. This is what I like to see with uh, watercolour. See how you've got all these lovely little uh, roots sort of spreading out into the wet paint. That's what we do with wet, old wet paint. And you can get some gorgeous effects like that. So the fun thing with watercolours is you want to mix them around and, and have a bit of fun with them. Yeah, some bright pink, what happens here? Oh, look at that. Oh, it's all growing everywhere. I, I love a lot of wet watercolour when I'm watercolouring. I like the paint to just go ahead and do what it wants to do and then end up with all these wonderful, unexpected results. Okay, we'll try a bit of the greens. Put a bit more water on that. Slosh it around a bit. Well, that's all right. I think the... Um, Paints are pretty true to the colour that they appear in the, the palette. So I don't think I'll bother so much with doing a, yeah, a swatch. Normally I would do a swatch card so I know whether what the paint's going to be like when I put it on the, the paper. But I think we'll just we'll, we'll shoot from the hip. Now before I go any further, I just want to try this little uh, blade brush because I haven't tried this and that. Pick up a bit of the red. nice. You can get some very fine, very fine marks there and some nice thick ones as well. Ah, nice. Okay, I'm gonna have some fun with that. Okay, right, had a bit of a play, let's move on to the book itself. Okay, I'm starting here to paint with the Artist Loft set. You can see I've got a nice juicy paintbrush filled with paint and I'm laying down a layer of paint using the wet on dry technique which is what we call it when we're laying down wet paint onto a dry piece of paper. I'm being very loose with the application sort of letting the colors do what they want. You see I've got the green down there and I've dropped a little bit of a lighter yellowy green in there to let it mix around. Now I'm leaving that area to dry. Watercolours is very much uh, a science of layering. So you want to start off by putting a layer of colour down as a base layer, then move off into another area while that's drying, or if you want to work on that area, to leave it for a bit so to give it time to dry, and then come back and put in some more layers to refine the details. Here I'm going to use a little wet on wet where I've put, I've just painted that uh, leaf green and I'm mixing a little bit of colour off on the side there which I'm going to drop into the green leaf and let it spread around a bit while that leaf is still wet and that is called a wet on wet technique. What I'm doing there is just allowing the new colour to merge into the old and give the leaf a bit more or texture and interest 
rather than just being in the one color. Filling in all the tiny little details here. Now I think I've just about finished that leaf and I've moved on yep to the little berries. I've decided to make these purple. Now the purple in that little artist loft set did surprise me. It has very intense pigment in it and you can make it very dark very easily. See while I'm doing the berries I've got quite a nice full brush there very wet and I'm coloring them in but I'm leaving a tiny little bit of white there to act as where the light is striking and reflecting off the berries and this will help make the berries three-dimensional looking I'm working I mean this video is sped up but I am working fairly quickly there to, to get the paint down it's water coloring uh, you can go slow or you can go quick but I think with these initial stages it's nice just to let yourself go loose and play around and splash the color around a little bit the other thing as you can see just then I made a, a little area I put too much paint down so I just blotted it up with a paper towel. The leaf, the green leaf behind where I'm working now has dried so that I can put the purple on. If I was to put the purple on when it was still wet the purple would spread out into the leaf and cause purple blotches on the green leaf. So before you introduce a new colour over a colour, pre-existing colour, make sure that it is dry if you don't want it to spread and merge. Now I'm leaving those purple areas to dry and I'm starting this leaf in the middle and I'm using another technique. I'm just putting a very dense layer of orange down just in the center and I'm wiping off my brush and picking up a little bit of yellow. Then I'm spread using the yellow and the paintbrush to spread the orange throughout the petals of the leaf to give it again some color gradient and, and some interest. I'll come back to this flower a few times to add different colors and different things to it but I've established a nice base layer that I can play with later when it dries. When you see me disappear like that I'm generally playing in my palette and mixing some colors from the uh, artist loft set to come up with a few different variations of colors to apply. Now the brush I'm using in this demonstration is a number eight round talcon brush and it's got a lovely fine point to it so that I can get as you can see very fine lines. The bristles themselves are long enough and thick enough to be able to hold a decent amount of paint so that I can cover fairly good area without having to re-dip my brush. And I'm starting work on these leaves. Once again I want you to note particularly how I'm leaving white areas to look again like areas where the sun is striking the leaves and to make it look lively. I'm allowing the paint to do what it likes in terms of where it's going to be thick and where it's going to be thin and this variation in colour helps to give watercolour its, its classic look. I'm dropping a little bit of a, a darker bluish green there just to put little shadows in to make it a little bit more three-dimensional and a little bit of yellow around the highlights just to give it a bit more feeling of, of sunlight striking it but you can see I've still left areas of light or white so very quickly I've managed to color that fairly effective looking set of leaves there here I'm attempting to have a go at making a background colour in the blue. I only do this in a very small area because I'm just experimenting here. I wasn't particularly happy with the way the blue was laying down. Um, if I had played with it some more I could probably get something I liked better. But as you can see they're quite fun and you can have a, a bit of fun playing with watercolours with them. But they're not the very best and if I'd tried this with a blue from an artist quality set I think I would have been a lot happier with the results and maybe have continued with it. Here I'm making some little flower buds. I've decided to leave the ends white but after putting the green in I wanted to sort of, uh, blend that green into the white so that's what I'm doing now. I'm just making the very start of them tiny, a tiny bit darker. Again, another leaf. I think you appreciate, even though this is slightly sped up, I am working fairly quickly. Water colouring I find, particularly if you just want to do something that's not very fussy and, and doesn't have multiple layers on it, it's a fairly fast way to colour in. Here I've laid the outside layer of that um, fruit and then I just get some water and then I use the water to blend the paint into the middle of the fruit to give it the, the nice round effect, leaving the centre white again as, as a highlight. Now I'm going back into the purple berries which are now nice and dry and just refining them a little bit. Basically I'm really just tidying them up and adding a little bit more shadow to the bases of them. If 
found the Artist Loft uh, quite pleasant to use. The only thing is, is that it is a student quality paint and it is very chalky. So you cannot use too many layers with this paint or else you end up with a very chalky, muddy looking piece of painting. You will find in a moment when we move to the artist quality paint, the, the difference in the, the look of the paint. The artist quality doesn't have that chalky kind of look when it's dry. But as I said, these uh, artist loft paint is quite good just to have a play around with and, and get the feel of watercolouring. You can have a lot of fun and make some very nice pieces of art just using these. And certainly this book is perfect, absolutely perfect to get you started in watercolouring. Here I've moved on to the artist quality watercolours and these are my schminkies. I've already started this side and laid a few base layers of colour again using the wet on dry technique. I'm leaving the leaves and the berries and the strawberry to dry while I work on another part of the painting and when those areas have dry I'll go back and start refining them. You'll notice the brush that I'm using here is the dagger brush that came to me along with the, the books. This is a beautiful brush for detail, particularly for those fine little twigs. I found I had far more control than when I was using the round talcon brush. So I can get a very fine line with that dagger brush and it holds a fair amount of paint so I don't have to keep going back and re-wetting it. I'm doing some of the smaller detail in the picture, the little bud there and some of the branches. One thing I love about this book is that I don't have to worry about drawing the pictures beforehand and with the print being that nice light grey, when I paint over the top it just merges in with the paint and it doesn't stand out so that I can have this beautiful you know, original watercolour effect without it looking like it was coming from a colouring book. This particular page that you see me painting on, I actually painted on the back of the page before I started this video, just so I could have a play with everything and get the feel of what I was going to do. And as you can see, there is no indication on this side of all the water and all the paint that I did on the other side. So you really can turn these pages over and start again if you don't like what you've done, or if you want to have a go at it again using different colors. The paper is fantastic, by the way. There really isn't very much in the way of buckling at all. In fact, it was hardly noticeable and it dried completely flat. And I use quite a lot of color with my washes as well. Here you can see I've gone back into this leaf which has dried and I'm putting a second layer to bring out the detail of the leaf. I've applied some to the veins and now I'm wetting the brush and then using the wet brush just to spread around the colour a little bit more to merge it in to the layer that I've already applied below. Once again, being careful to save those white areas, I'm going in and adding more detail and definition to the leaves. And you can go in and add as much detail as you like, just wait for the layers to dry in between. You may like it to stay very loose and very watery or you may like to go in there and keep putting on more and more intricate little layers to make it very detailed looking. It's really up to you and how much you want to push it and what you're satisfied with. Here I'm dropping in a darker colour in those cherries to give it a little bit of shadow at the base. All the time I'm moving around the paper from the wet areas that I want to leave to dry and then going back uh, once they're dry and uh, continuing to add more detail. Now I will say another thing that you have to keep in mind when you're watercolour, particularly if you're mixing paints, is you don't want to mix too little. One of the big errors that people make with watercolours is to have too little paint and uh, their brush too dry and this can leave a very scratchy unsatisfying effect and an unsatisfying experience. I find the easiest way to mix colours with watercolours is actually to drop a little bit of water onto my palette and then pick up the paint from the, the paint where the paint is and uh, mix it into the water making sure that I have a sufficient quantity to cover all the areas that I want. Now these, this is a great for light washes where you want to start off with just starting with light washes on your page 
and um, if you want darker washes or darker paint you just have less water and more paint but do make sure you've mixed up a fair amount so that you're not ending up with a dry paintbrush and you're struggling to scratch up the last of the paint to cover the areas that you wanted to cover. Okay, this is the section that I did with the Artist Loft set, the cheap student quality brand. And this side I did with the Schminky set. And as you can see, the paper has taken both equally well. There's oh, maybe the teeniest little bit of buckling or curl in it, but it's not enough to worry me. And it's dried fairly flat, so that's good. Both sets are, are fun. Uh, the Artist quality set, of course, is darker and richer in colour because it has more pigment, less filler. This uh, a student quality set, the Artist Loft, is a bit more chalky but it's still equally fun to, to practice with, to learn with. So if you're buying this uh, book, I would suggest uh, if you're not a watercolourist, um, start off with a cheaper set. You'll have just as much fun playing around with it and if you feel that you like it and you want to go further, then move on to the artist set. Hope you're enjoying any colouring adventures that you are currently on and until next time, happy colouring!